chapter 12 is the cell cycle and the emphasis on 12 is cell division it's mitosis so we'll be looking at mitosis here particularly and in chapter 13 we will look at meiosis so what is mitosis mitosis is simply what happened when there is a division that will make one cell to become two and two cells to become four four cells become eight eight becomes 16. now what actually happened in mitosis it's simply that the so when there's fertilization for instance now when the egg fertilizes, when the sperm fertilizes the egg after the egg fertilizes after the sperm fertilizes the egg rather a zygote is going to be formed the zygote that is formed is a diploid cell now that cell will now continue to undergo mitotic division before a child will be born when a child is born the baby is small but all the features of the body is already there that child continues to undergo mitotic division which will later give which is what leads to growth if there's bone if there's fracture for instance it is mitosis that will help that will happen that will cause the healing if you have a deep wound, you have a cut, for instance, it is mitosis that is responsible for that healing. So it's a kind of cell division. And another word that I use to describe mitosis is nuclear multiplication. So it is the nucleus multiplying. So instead of, I mean, you have one, it's going to increase to two. You have two, it's going to increase to four. Four is going to increase to eight. Eight becomes four uh 16 16 becomes 32 it will keep splitting like that and it's going to be increasing in number and that is what we call growth i remember when my baby was born she i could carry her with just one hand like this but now i can't do that again because now she has become big did she go back into the womb to be born no all that happened to her that made her to become bigger that make her upper limbs to grow longer that makes our hair to grow longer is what we call mitosis. So it is cell division. It is cell growth. That is what is responsible for development, for growth. It is what is responsible for healing. All right, so let's go. Now, so most cell division result in genetically identical daughter cells. I'm going to explain that. Now, what does mitosis give you? Now, there is one cell is going to divide. That one cell that divide. So now, let me say this first. Mitosis does not happen in any cell other than somatic cells. And what the, what's the meaning of somatic cells? Mitosis only happens in general body cells. Mitosis is not, is not responsible, is not involved in reproduction is just responsible for growth so it only happens in your body cells right so all your body cells are diploid cells and when we say diploid we mean that the cells have 46 set of 46 chromosomes right it has 46 chromosomes now the 46 chromosomes when the cell divide is going to give rise to the same type of diploid daughter cells they have 46 chromosomes and they are going to be exactly like the parent because it's not like forming new cells it's the same set of cell just increasing all right so if this is the parent cell for instance what you are going to see in the product are these guys here and so we say the daughter cells are diploid daughter cells that are identical as the parent all right so here is the parent and here are the daughter cells. So, at the interface, the cell will grow in preparation for cell division. The chromosomes are duplicated. I'm going to talk about each of those stages. But in all, what is happening is that the product of mitosis is two identical 
deployed. So you see it's two data cells, but I call it two identical deployed data cells. Call it two identical deployed data cells. Those are the products of mitosis. The product of mitosis are two identical deployed data cells. So you see those are one, two. They are identical as a parent, just exactly like that, and they are deployed data cells. So the ability of organisms to produce more of their own kind is one of the characteristics that distinguish living organisms from non-living organisms. The continuity of life is based on the reproduction of cells, which is premised on cell division. Let's go. Um, okay, let's look at this. So there are majorly three stages in this process, which we'll be looking at in details. There's a the interface. In interface, what's going to happen? Some theory has been that interface is resting state and nothing is happening there. But it's not the truth because it's just like um, if you need to take an exam, you use weeks to prepare for the exams, for the exam, right? But you are going to take the exam in one hour. So does that mean the time that you use in preparation for the exam is a time of rest because you are not taking the exam? No. That's actually the time when you worked. The exam is just to quickly manifest what you have done in weeks. So to think that mitos in interface is nothing is to think that the days you use to prepare for an exam does not matter, that the only thing that matters is the time, the hour you are using for the exam. So interface is actually the preparation space. The cell at that point is preparing for cell division. It's preparing for the division process. And so to prepare for the division process, the cell needs to gather resources that are going to be enough for two cells. So think about it. If you live in one bedroom now and you want to move to two bedrooms, then you started buying stuff that will fill up the two bedroom. That's actually what is happening in interface. The interface, the cell is getting ready. The cell is going to start the division process to divide, I mean, it's going to start dividing the nucleus so that the nucleus can be two. It's going to start uh, uh, duplicating some chromosomes, I mean, some um, organelles, some proteins during the interface. All right, so the interface have three stages which I'm going to be talking about. There's the gap phase, there's a the synthetic phase, and there's the gap phase two. So there's gap phase one or growth phase one, synthetic phase, and there growth phase two. After that, the cell now goes to the actual cell division process. Interface, of course, takes longer time than the M phase, which is the mitosis itself. Uh, the mitosis, the major thing that happens in mitosis is that the chromosome is going to separate itself. And um, the cytokinesis is when the cell membrane will split into two. Now, this is very important because if you look at what happens here, if you look at this state, for instance, now, at this point, it's like you have an egg that has two yolks. It is not two eggs, even though it has two yolks. It is still one egg. It's just that the egg has two yolks. So this is what you see. Uh, if cytokinesis does not happen we don't have two cells we only have a cell that have the content of two cells so the cell must separate for it to become two cells and that stage is called cytokinesis so we said cell division is not complete yet without cytokinesis all right so this is what we call the cell division cycle is the interface the main phase and then the cytokinesis So key role of cell division, I've talked about some of them. Cell division plays important role in life. Um, 
single cell organisms give rise to new organisms through cell division, and I'm going to be talking about that. Multicellular eukaryotics undergo embryonic development through cell division. Cell division continues to function in renewal and repair uh, in fully grown multicellular organisms. So renewal, repairs, growth, all are related to cell division and particularly mitosis. Um, so let's look at cell organi organization of genetic material. We'll look at some of them, then most likely I'll be talking about cell division proper on Thursday. So a crucial function of the most of most cell division is the distribution of identical genetic material to two daughter cells. Like I told you, one cell is going to give rise to two identical daughter cells and it's going to de be deployed is just exactly like the parent. Cell division is remarkably accurate in passing DNA from one generation to another, to the next. All the DNA in the cell constitute of the cell genome. So when you want to study the entire gene that is present in the cell, we call it genome. It is more like you, you go to a store, for instance, now, a mall. At the entrance of the mall, you are going to see a, a, um, a device, like a map, showing you all the stores in that building, in the mall. And it tells you the direction of where they are. So that's what a genome looks like. A genome tells you about all the gene that is present in a cell. So a genome can consist of a single DNA molecule common in prokaryotic or a number of DNA molecules, which is what you see in eukaryotic. Prokaryotic has just one nuclear, one DNA anyway. So its genome is just one. DNA, it's a, it's a circular DNA, it's long though, but it's just one. But in eukaryotic, we have multiple linear DNA. So DNA molecules in a cell are packed inside chromosome. So in a chromosome are DNA molecules. Segment of DNA is a gene. So a particular segment of a DNA that code for a particular trait is a gene, so we can say gene for high color. A gene is not a different structure. A gene is more like you have a DNA. Let's say I'll just make a little draw here, drawing here. So let's say this is a DNA. I'll just do it like this, okay? Let's say this is a DNA sequence. You know, DNA is usually A, C, G, like that, right? So if this segment code for Ear color. Uh, let me say ear, the hair, the oops. Let's say this color code the shape of your hair. Let's say this code for the shape of your nose. Now, the segment of the DNA, the entire thing, they are DNA molecules, right? The segment of the DNA that code for this ear is a gene. The code, one that code for the shape of the nose is a gene for the nose shape. Now, the entire thing is what we call chromosome. So in quotes, DNA is on the chromosome. Chromosome makes gene. Now, chromosome is actually DNA plus a protein, which we call histone protein. Histone. So DNA plus histone protein makes a chromosome. And it is the segment of a DNA that code for a particular trait that is called a gene. So all the DNA in a cell constitute a genome. A genome can consist of a single DNA, which you see in prokaryotic cell, and multiple DNA, which you see in eukaryotic cell. DNA molecules in a cell are packed into chromosome. They are packed into chromosomes, like I told you. The DNA molecule of a chromosome carries hundreds to thousands of genes. Now, I told you already that 
prokaryotic cell, I mean that somatic cells undergo mitosis. That the only cell that undergo mitosis in your body are the general body cells, which are called somatic cells. Now, eukaryotic chromosome consists of chromatin. Now, what do we mean by chromatin? Chromatin, now I'm saying chromatin like that because I want you to, I, I'm, I'm trying to emphasize the end there because there's something we call chromatid as well. So chromatin, and I joke with it, I call it chromatinin. Now, please be with me. I told you earlier that chromosome is DNA plus histone protein. Is DNA coupled with some protein? That's the that's chromosome. So chromosome. I'm going to do this here. Um, I can just type this. So chromosome is normally. Chromosome is DNA plus histone protein. This tone is a protein, so we just call it DNA plus histone proteins. Now, what is the difference between chromosome and DNA? Chromosome is so if you have chromosome i mean i'm coming this is not so dear chromosome in terms of content chromosome and chromatin are the same thing in terms of content they are the same thing the only thing in them is the arrangement so chromatin is equal to uncondensed chromosome And this is my analogy for this. So think about this now. If you look at the room where you are, where you are now at the moment, you will notice that if you look at the room, the room may not look dirty. But if you bring a vacuum and vacuum the room, you are going to see dirt there. So at the time when you have not vacuumed the room, we say the room is not dirty, but doesn't mean there are no tiny, tiny stuff there. They are there. The tiny, tiny stuff, we call it, we say that they are not visible, even though they are there. So we say they are chromatin. They are there, but they are not looking visible as dirty. Now, but when you vacuum it together, you have condensed it. And now you are going to see it in the vacuum, a bunch of dirt because it has a convert it has a condensed that is what we now call chromosome so the difference between chromosome and chromatin is that chromatin is uncondensed it is invisible but chromosome is visible now why do you think why do we have the challenge of calling it different names now this is it at different stages in cell cycle there's a stage when it will be needful for the chromosome to separate or for the DNA content to separate. At the time when they need to separate, they have to be solid and easy to divide. So if they are tiny, tiny, it is, it is going to be difficult to separate them. Think about it. When your room is not vacuumed and the dirt is just scattered, it is difficult to divide it evenly. But when you pack it in the vacuum, then you can see dividing it two equally because they are condensed now. So cell division is only going to be possible when the chromosome condenses. If chromosome doesn't condense, they will appear as chromatin, and then the cell, the cell division is going to be impossible. So that means in the interface, chromatin is going to be what we are going to have. But when we get to mitosis, 
we are going to have chromosome because now the cell is ready to divide. So eukaryotic chromosome consists of chromatin, a complex of DNA and protein that condenses during cell division. You see that? They are going to later condense during cell division, but at this time, they are not condensed. Every eukaryotic species has a characteristic number of chromosomes in each cell nucleus. For somatic cells, there are two sets of chromosomes, and that's why we call it diploid. We say they are diploid. That is, they have 46 chromosomes. All right, so we say they have full set of chromosomes. That's what you see here, somatic cell. Now you see that they have two sets. Now, gametes, on the other hand, that does not undergo mitosis, they only have half the set, like what you see here now. This is half of what you have in the somatic cell. So we say these ones, we say that they are haploid. Because they have 23 chromosomes. Instead of 46, they have 23. Let's go. So in, in repair... In preparation for cell division, DNA is replicated and the chromosome will condense. You see that? Each duplicated chromosome has two sister chromatids. This is why I told you I was particular about the chromatin, so that you know it ends with N. At the time when chromosome condenses, this is what you are going to have. When it condenses, you are going to have each. You are going to have two strands. One strand, second strand. So the two strands, each strand is called chromatid. So when they condense, they are going to form chromosome, and a chromosome consists of two sister chromatids. So I'll put that here. I'll be running off soon. Then I'll complete that later. So chromosome actually is equal to two chromatids. So that means two chromatids make a chromosome. Chromatin, chromatin. is uncondensed chromosome that's chromatin in quote if we want to flip it we say chromosome is condensed <laughs> condensed chromatin i'm just bringing it different ways for you never to forget now you see when they are joined when they when the sister chromatids are together, they have to be joined together. So the point where they are joined, now take note, the point where they are joined together is called centromere. The point where the chromosome, where the two chromatids are joined together, we call it centromere. So the centromere is the narrow waist of the duplicated chromosome where the two sister chromatids are mostly attached. So you see that? So this is going to be the centromere now. Each duplicated chromosome has two sister chromatids joined together at the origin at the original chromosome. Joint copies of the original chromosome are long attached along their line by quercetin. Now, see, this quercetin is the protein, which is like glue. Whereas centromere is a location. Centromere is not a structure, it's a location. So the location where the chromosome, the chromatids, are joined together is called centromere. What joined them together at that location is the quercetin, which is a protein.
Now, during cell division, what you're going to be seeing at that time is going to be, we'll be talking about chromatid, chromosome, we'll say chromo chromosome is separating. So now you see during cell division, the two sister chromatids of each duplicated chromosome will separate and move into two nucleus, in code two different nuclei, right? Once separate, the chromatids will now be called chromosomes. We'll be talking about that. So in essence, what we are saying is this is a chrom this is a chromatid, or this is a chromosome, right? The chromosome duplicated. This duplication is going to happen at interface. When it duplicates, we call it sister chromatids. When they now separate again, they become chromosomes. All right, that's the story there. Now, eukaryotic cell division consists of mitosis, like I told you, the division of the genetic material in the nucleus, and then cytokinesis, which is a separation process. All right. So gametes are produced by a variation of cell division called meiosis. I'll be talking about meiosis in the next chapter, but meiosis, another word you can use for meiosis is to call it nuclear reduction. It's like you are reducing a diploid set, which has 46 chromosomes, to haploid, which has 23 chromosomes. And that's what we are going to be doing later. Meiosis G non-identical daughter cell, contrary to what you see in, in, in mitosis, mitosis will give you identical daughter cells and diploid. Meiosis is going to give you four, four non-identical haploid daughter cells. Let me play this short video quickly, uh, just as a refresher. All right, so that's just. Oh, okay. 